this is uh, Dr. Moin Hasib again with another uh, subject with another lesson on accreditation and quality for laboratories. Um, today we'll talk about a quality management program for clinical laboratories. This is lesson one. Okay, the subject is divided into two lessons. In lesson one, we'll um, discuss why do you need a quality management program. QM program. Who's responsible for it? Definition, uh, define the key elements of uh, QMB per uh, CLSI and CAP requirements. In lesson two, we'll talk about what are the criteria for evaluating the effectiveness of your own QMP and how often. And I'm going to give you an example of a QMP. Why do you need a, a QMB program? By the way, they used to call it a quality management plan, but CAB changed it now to quality management program. You need a quality management program first to enhance and build the quality into all aspects of operation and activities that impact patient care by establishing policies, development procedures, and applying them to daily processes. You need it also to promote quality and patient safety through risk reduction and continuous improvement. Also, it, you need it because it's required by a CAB accreditation. If you want to be CAB accredited, you must have a quality management program. In LabGen standard 13806, QM program says the laboratory has a written quality management program. There must be a document that describes the overall QM program. The document need to need not to be detailed. This is a key word. Your QM program does not have to be 100 pages or 120 pages. Maximum 15. 20, something like that, okay? So the document need not to be detailed, but should spell out the objectives and essential elements of the QM program. The QM plan may be based on, so when you wanna write it, may be based on CAB requirements, okay? CLSI requirements or elements. Uh, ISO 15189 or for a blood bank, maybe you can use the AABB uh, or something else as long as you cover all the uh, needed or required elements. The lab as a whole, okay, the lab as a whole, like in, you need a lab gen quality management program. However, each and every section in the lab also need a quality management program, but it should be based on the lab general quality management program, as I will show you at the end when I uh, give you an example of, of my own quality management program. Who's responsible for it? Who's responsible for the quality management program? The ultimate responsible person is the laboratory medical director. In the uh, team leader checklist, or now they call it the director assessment checklist, 10440 effective QM, effective QM. It says the director ensure effective quality management program for the laboratory. The director must be involved in the decision, implementation, and oversight of the laboratory's quality management program. This includes all aspects of testing performance, including the pre-analytical, analytical, and post-analytical phases of testing. In order to comply with this standard, the director need have a written QMB covering all areas of the lab. You need record documenting that the director approved of the QM uh, program. You need record of the selection or, and review quality indicators. 
uh, you need a record of QM uh, meeting minutes, for example, uh, the, or the annual assessment, or complaints and incident, or anything that will help you in uh, proving that you are involved in the um, design, uh, writing and approving and reviewing uh, of the QM uh, program. Who else responsible for the QMP? It's the section directors or the section uh, heads, also the lab manager, administrative director if you have one, the supervisors, the seniors, and all staff. So the ultimate person is resp uh, responsible for the QM program is the lab medical director. However, everybody else is also responsible uh, for the QMB according to their level of responsibilities. Let's define the key elements or talk about the key elements of the QMP, per CLSI and CAP requirements. There are 12 fundamental components for building a quality management program. They are called uh, quality system essentials or Q SEs. Each QSE, as we will talk about them in, in, the, in the next slides, each QSE consists of policies, processes, procedures, and forms. Each one of these elements we're going to be talking about could have more than one policy or a procedure or form. Okay. Uh, so these policies, processes, and procedures and forms that make the QSEs, they are necessary to manage and improve work practices that will ultimately lead to better patient uh, care. We said before, and I'm repeating this again, we said this before in previous uh, uh, lessons, that the policy is your intent is what you intend to do. The process, how it happens, and the procedure describe how do you do it in your own laboratory, and the forms are used to, uh, to record your actions. Like we said also, I gave you this example before, if we need to uh, do a job description, okay? Then the policy will state the intent and direction for the job description. Uh, the process will describe the activities that uh, transform the intent to action. And the procedure document the instruction on how to do the job description. And then you, uh, uh, the form will be used to, um, uh, to list all of the job description, the duties, the responsibilities, and so on and so forth. The quality system essentials, they are as follows, the 12 of them, organization, documents and records, personnel, equipment, purchasing and inventory, process, procedure, improvement, number seven, improve information management, number eight, assessment, internal and external, number nine, process control, number 10 customer satisfaction occurrence management is number 11 and number 12 is facilities and safety so your quality management program need to include all these 12 uh, elements so this is the, just a diagram for it as you can see, these are the quality uh, system essentials and they need to be uh, integrated in all uh, aspect of laboratory uh, testing, the pre-analytical, analytical, and post-analytical. Uh, okay, let's talk about these elements one by one and what you need to include briefly, what you need to include under each element. Under organization, you need to talk about management involvement, and it will cover things like the vision, the mission, the value, the objectives, the goals, scope of service, functions, and responsibilities. 
and also we talk about the quality uh, officer or staff. Under personnel, you need to talk about the job titles, positions, JDs, functions and responsibilities of the different uh, staff you have, like the chairman if you have one, the medical director, the head of quality, or quality manager, uh, section head, technical supervisors, and laboratory staff. And you need to have an organizational uh, chart. Under equipment, you need to cover things like proper selection of your equipment, installation, validation, qualification, training for your personnel, calibration, uh, maintenance, the quality control, troubleshooting, and documentations. Under purchasing and inventory, you need to cover things like uh, define criteria for products and services to be purchased, a system for receiving, inspecting, and accepting, storing, and inventorying incoming materials, maintaining inventory, uh, efficient and cost-effective operation need to uh, need needed for uninterrupted availability of reagent supplies and services. The laboratory should uh, set expectation, build and maintain good relationship with providers and uh, vendors. Why? Because if you have a good relationship with them, they they can help you when you need them when you're short on reagents or you need somebody to come and fix your instrument uh, fast. So that's why you have to have a good relationship with your, with your vendors and suppliers. Uh, contracts to obtain critical supplies, material, references, and other needed services uh, are to be reviewed to ensure that each party's ex expectations are uh, defined. Under um, a process, procedure control, you need technical procedures, you need forms, you need uh, specimen management, uh, uh, you need uh, to discuss under that, you need to discuss collection, preparation, storage, etc. You need to talk about calibration procedure, quality control, efficiency testing, and you need also to cover test validation, verification. Under information management, uh, information management may be manual or computerized. Uh, you need a LIS uh, policy procedure, uh, like downtime procedure, incoming and outgoing information, computer access and insecurity, uh, under privacy and keeping things confidential. You need data integrity and storage. You need to talk about that and you need to talk about uh, training. You need, if you, you need a training checklist for your uh, LIS uh, system. Under occurrence management, you need to capture, analyze, and document information from non-confirming events to identify uh, systematic uh, problems. Take immediate corrective action to try to re prevent reoccurrences. Under assessment, you have internal assessment, okay, and you have external assessment. Under internal assessment, how well are we doing? You need to answer these questions. How well are we doing? Are, are we in compliance with the requirement? For example, quality indicators. You have to have quality indicators where you need uh, goals or benchmark or internal versus external sources. The internal will be based on your uh, uh, baseline. You do a baseline in your own uh, lab. External, you could get it from uh, literature, from CAB, from uh, research, and similar hospitals or something like that. Okay. The internal audit program, uh, like self-inspection, and the external assessment, like accreditation assessment, which is done by your accreditation uh, body. And also you need proficiency uh, testing. 
for process improvement, there are many sources of information you can get in order to do uh, improvement in your laboratory, like from customers, employees, occurrence management, internal audits. You can and you need to use a problem solving process like SWOT or BDCA, um, identification, analysis, ideas for solution, implementation, and monitoring. Revise the process based on information gathered, periodic reporting. Okay, each lab section must be involved. Sample of QM uh, indicators. You need to have those like in your indicator in the pre-analytical phase, analytical phase, and post-analytical phase. Okay. It should be monitored monthly and evaluated annually by the medical uh, director or designee. These are examples of uh, quality indicators and the phase that they could be um, used for, okay, if you, if you need it. Next, service and satisfaction. You need to identify the customer, the internal versus the external. Internal customer are the people you work with. They're hired by your own uh, a lab, okay? And the external could be the doctors, could be your, uh, your vendors, or from um, uh, those who are visitors also. So you need to identify the customer needs, okay? You, need, you do that by surveys, like you survey the healthcare providers, the physician, the nurses, and the staff, and you, you need to also survey the outpatients, maybe outpatient probami, okay? And you need to uh, listen to your customer, get customer feedback. You have to do this survey every, every two years. It's required by, uh, by Sibahi and it's required by CAP. And you need mechanism to respond to feedback. Like if if the if somebody is complaining and the, co the and the complaint is valid, you need to address. You need to have a corrective action, and you need to get back to those who um, uh, complain to to you. Facilities and safeties under facilities. You need to talk about the design, the design of your lab, the, the adequate, uh, ad adequate space. They talk about the environment and under uh, safety, you need to have safety IBBs, safety uh, products, uh, safety, um, you need to be concerned about the safety of the staff and the others like the visitors. And you need also to be concerned about the safety of the environment. So maintain employee safety training record. You have to have a tra safety training checklist for each new employees. Document, uh, documents available to staff, like the uh, SDC safety data sheets, disaster plan, chemical inventory, etc. You need to have an annual fire drill records that all the um, staff uh, involved in it and have it, okay? I am done with the lesson one on quality management program for clinical laboratories. To continue with the subject, please go to lesson two. In lesson two, we'll talk about what are the criteria for evaluating the effectiveness of your own QMP and how often, and then I'm gonna give you an example of a real quality management program. Thank you for watching.